and the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale as I was odd. He shaved the faces of gentlemen who never though after were heard of again. He trod a path that few had trod, did Sweeney Todd. The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. That is how this movie should have started. Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, released in 2007 and is directed by Tim Burton, who is behind all of your childish nightmares. And this film is starring Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, and Alan Rickman. Of course, this film is based on the Broadway musical of the same name that was written by Stephen Sondheim and Hugh Wheeler. It has been 15 years since Benjamin Barker had been exiled from the town of London. Not his fault, though, because a judge, played by Alan Rickman, really had the heart for his wife and wanted Benjamin Barker to go away. And now Benjamin Barker is back under the name of Sweeney Todd, looking to exact his revenge on the judge and all those who did him wrong. And to help shape and mask all of his vengeance comes in Mrs. Lovitz, who runs a not-so-successful meat pie shop. But as Sweeney goes on his murdering spree, all of a sudden new ingredients for the meat pies start revealing themselves. So basically, we get another Chili Con Carnival from South Park. You know, the episode where Eric Cartman fed Scott Tenderman's parents to him in a bowl of chili? That's, that's what we get here, just with meat pies. So, Sweeney Todd. Um... Hmm. I'm not sure if you can tell that I'm not really a fan of this film, but... I'm not really a fan of this film. The film doesn't hit on any aspect at all. I honestly feel like Tim Burton saw the play Sweeney Todd and was like, oh, hey, another creepy, goth, emo-y type story that I could just remake and put my own emo-y and goth take spin design on it. <laughs> that has to be what it is because I'm not getting anything new or exciting with this. And the film starts that way. The musical Sweeney Todd has an amazing chorus. It's very much like a Greek chorus. We're going back all the way from the Greek times where they would comment on the action that would happen in the scene to let the audience know, okay, here's what's happening, here's how you should be feeling, and then here's where we're going. Now we don't need the thing that is essential for this musical to actually make sense and for all the story structure to make sense, so We'll just, we'll just cut it. The musical starts with this amazing opening song, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. It talks about Sweeney Todd. It goes through everything. It introduces the city of London as its own character, and it introduces all of these different cast members. Some that are revealed to be more important later on in the film are introduced in that first song. If you take out that first song, all of a sudden this random important background character just kind of comes on screen, out of nowhere, and then leaves, and then doesn't come back until the end. <sighs> and I completely understand that not all aspects of a Broadway musical, a live performance, translates well to screen. But that definitely would. We've seen choruses in films before. He just wanted to focus on his muse, Johnny Depp, and his girlfriend, wife, I don't know if they're still together, Helena Bonham Carter, who I will be very honest, was annoying as fuck in this film. Let me start with Johnny Depp as Sweeney Todd. I think he does an admirable job. I think he is okay. It's nothing new that we've seen in Tim Burton films with Johnny Depp before. He's brooding. He's angry. He has weird white complexion for some reason. Wearing some fun, kooky-ass wigs. It's a Johnny Depp Tim Burton performance. Can the man sing? Eh, nah, nah. He can talk sing, okay. Which is really the note that you can apply to every actor who sings in this film, other than the kid who outshines all of them. He is the best singer by far in this entire film, which I don't know what that says about your film when the kid who comes in for, like, a song and a half just completely steals it and schools everyone. But everyone else really w sings, really they, they talk sing in their character. And some do that well to where me, the audience member, can understand what you're saying. Johnny Depp does it, Sasha Baron Cohen, I can understand what he is saying when he's not 
gargling up his tongue with his very poor French or Italian accent. I, I couldn't tell. But then you get to Helena Bonham Carter, who I don't think I understood a single word that came out of her mouth. I don't know if she can sing. I mean, if she can sing, it's all falsetto. Oh, Mr. Todd, I'm so happy you got me such a fly. I don't want to watch it again, Mr. Todd. It was like watching nonstop Monty Python, just without the enjoyment and the humor and the laughter and the 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 love. Seriously, am I just being too hard on her? But I couldn't understand anything that she said. You're focusing on the Cockney accent and you're trying to sing but you can't really sing. You're trying to do the character singing, which I'm okay with others doing, but when you do it, it's so high and so falsetto-y that it's very, very, very annoying. I guess I'm just used to seeing Angela Lansbury in that role, and Angela Lansbury, Helena Bonham Carter, they're just not the same, the same person, and it's hard for me to wrap my head around anyone other than Angela Lansbury playing that role, because it's so iconic for her. Carter? does not do it. She is god-awful in here. I think this is what kind of started the downfall and my hatred towards her as a performer. It wasn't redeemed until many years later with A King's Speech is when I was like, oh, hey, I like you again. But here, Sweeney Todd, no. I will say it's really nice seeing Alan Rickman on screen again. I almost forgot about him as an actor. I haven't actually watched a lot of films with him in it. When I watch Harry Potter, I don't even think it's Alan Rickman. I think it's Severus Snape. That's how great he was in that role. When he popped up here, I was like, oh yeah, he's in this film. And watching it again, gosh, he's the light of this film for me. Even though he wants to marry his stepdaughter because he doesn't want any other man having her after he exiled Benjamin Barker, who was his stepdaughter's actual father he wants to do yeah yeah it make it makes sense so you can imagine his reaction when toby is just sitting outside his stepdaughter whose name is joanna and in case you ever forget there's like 20 different reprises of the song joanna in this film where all they say is joanna i feel you i'll steal you i'll i'll cut your hair i'll i'll lock you away you, you, you get the idea that, oh, her name is Joanna. You can imagine how he feels when this young Toby ganders at Joanna. You gander, sir. Don't gander, Joanna. But I think he's great. I mean, he he was born to be a villain in films, even though in real life he was one of the biggest sweethearts ever. I forget when he died. I think it was like three years ago. He secretly had cancer and and passed away, and uh, I, I miss that guy. I miss him in my movies. Now, speaking of the whole Toby-Joanna love connection thing, I know it, it, it's a trope in musicals. It's a, it's a trope in, you know, you know, going all the way back to Shakespeare's time, Romeo and Juliet, when someone is looking up at a balcony and there is a beautiful woman up there. All of a sudden, you surrender yourself and you proclaim your everlasting love to them just because you're looking at them. And they are, by all accounts, super hot. It's just Shakespeare was more poetic about it, and they actually had a conversation. Here, Toby is in love with Joanna, and they never once speak in this film to each other. Maybe, like, two lines of dialogue, but that's at the end. This whole relationship establishing, oh, I need to save her and break her free from her chains... There is not one word communicated between these two. Which makes me want to go up to this Toby character and slap him across the face. Alan Rickman does that for me, but my god, I wanted to join in. And it's all a matter of perspective. If, if we're looking at the other side, if we're looking at this from Alan Rickman's side, this guy, this Toby guy, is a stalker and we need to lock him up. From my viewpoint as an audience member, I think this guy is a stalker and should be locked up or put a restraining order on him from this house to not be lurking outside of Joanna's window day in and day out. I don't know, maybe that's just the world that I live in, but this guy's a creeper. And even though he has an angelic voice, it doesn't save him from that aspect about him. The lyrics of his song are as follows.
I feel you, Joanna. I feel you. I'll steal you, Joanna. I'll steal you. Do they think that walls can hide you? Even now, I'm at your window. I am in the dark beside you, buried sweetly in your yellow hair. Translation, stalker. Or as Alan Rickman says, a gander. Characters like this, men like this, should not be allowed to walk the streets at night. If you are that interested in her, why don't you take a chance, knock on the door, and ask whoever it is, hey, may I court this person? You know, open up that communication. Which I think is probably the biggest aspect of this film, really of this musical that just drives me crazy. If people would not lie and just communicate with each other, this movie wouldn't happen. I think that's something you could say about every single musical ever made. You know, talk to each other, communicate, and then conflict won't happen. But it doesn't happen. Secrets are kept, lies are told, crushes are hidden and revealed at poor, poor times in the movie, and everything just kind of goes, goes awry. And it's done in the style of Tim Burton, you know what you're going to get with that. You're going to get a lot of black on black on gray on black. Just with this film, it's about slitting a bunch of throats while this guy is giving you a nice shave. But don't worry, it doesn't look like blood. It doesn't look like corn syrup blood. It looks like tomato soup blood. So all these people have tomato soup inside of them, basically. Which, actually, to be honest, now that I'm saying that, I'm kind of gagging because I have a taste aversion when it comes to tomato soup. I, I got really sick eating it when I was a kid and haven't been able to smell or taste it since. So, ugh. but it's Tim Burton being Tim Burton-y and, and Johnny Depp trying his best and Helena Bonham Carter just annoying the fuck out of me. I'm going to give Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber of Fleet Street one and a half out of five Blu-rays. No, sir. I didn't like it. All right, everyone. Now comes my favorite part in my videos where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next. And the next film is actually a screener that I received from the director of the film. His name is Philip G. Carroll, and it's a film called The Honeymoon Phase. It came out earlier this year in August, I believe. And it's a psychological thriller about this young couple. It's about a, a month into their marriage, and they sign up for this case study where this, this scientist is trying to figure out what is the honeymoon phase, and why does it only last for so long? How can we get it to extend, and how, how can we get it to be longer? I watched the trailer for it, and I was actually very intrigued, so I'm very excited to check this one out. And it's cool that I got the communication from the director himself, which is kind of validating in some way. We'll check that one out next time. Hey, if any of you have recommendations for films that you want me to review on here, you can leave your comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendation there. If I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and give you a shout on the channel. And if you really want me to get your recommendation done as quickly as I possibly can, you, you want to bypass all of the random selecting, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Just select the donate button, attach your movie, recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it and get my review of it done as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, if you've seen Sweeney Todd, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of the honeymoon phase. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.